Hi guys, I hope you're good. I've got a little bit of business to attend to, so I've come oop north to Leeds. I couldn't miss the opportunity to explore the water and thought you might like to tag along. As the canal passes through the city centre, the constant rumble of trains, traffic and building sites fades into the background and is replaced by the calming sounds of birdsong, running water and trees dancing in the wind. It's a marriage of two worlds, entirely opposite to each other, yet somehow able to coexist and raise the attraction of the other. The chirping of birds and the bright morning sun beaming down on the water let me know that spring is almost here. But it was still pretty cold, so I'll apologise now for my constant sniffling throughout the video. And if you could see my hands, you'd have noticed that they were a worrying hue somewhere between red and blue. The Leeds and Liverpool Canal, as the name suggests, was built to connect the city to the Leeds and Liverpool. It's 127 miles long, but I'm only going to give you a fraction of that today. The first thing I notice is how empty the canal is. I walked for quite a way before I found my first boat. This is so strange coming from London. I'm thinking maybe I'll move to Leeds. This part of the canal runs parallel to the River Eyre. The Eyre and Calder navigation is a canalised route of the rivers Eyre and Calder. The navigation joins the Leeds and Liverpool Canal in Leeds. The second thing I notice is that almost all of the towpath is concreted, which is great if you want to bum along on your bicycle. Your bicycle that was supplied with a bell. A bell that won't run out of dings no matter how many times you use it to warn people of your approach. Ding the damn bell. Perhaps Leeds isn't too unlike London after all. I've arrived at my first lock. There are 91 locks in total on the Leeds and Liverpool. This is lock 3, St Anne Ings lock, with some artwork in the background. My granddad was called Bert. Perhaps it's coming back into fashion. A little further on, and there are some more artwork on the walls. A common feature along this part of the canal that I saw today. Even the locks are decorated. And so too was the second boat I saw. I know this will be controversial with some of my viewers, but keeping separate the legality issues, I'm quite fond of graffiti as an art form. There's a lot of redevelopment happening around Leeds, but there's still plenty of evidence of the area's industrial heritage. The canal was used to carry textiles, effluent, limestone and coal. Over a million tonnes a year of the stuff, in fact. The Leeds and Liverpool was a successful canal, as the locks were wide, meaning bigger boats could travel through. Trade continued on the canal until the early 1980s. Way before I was born, but still fairly recent. And here's a traditional cargo boat. Next to it, is that a floating shed? Something that's not floating is this poor girl. A sunken boat is always a sad sight. Unfortunately, it's not too long until I meet another. It seems to be a bit of a common theme on this waterway. I soon get to the Leeds Industrial Museum, but as you can see it wasn't open. Leeds folk, is it worth putting on the list for next time? The water looks really deep here, and being so high up above the river is a bit unsettling. Despite the large amounts of litter, the river looks really lovely down below. And then I got stuck in a tree. I'm almost at my destination and a little disappointed that I haven't seen more boats, but then I make up for it in abundance when I stumble upon a marina. Boats, 
boats everywhere. These moorings look so quaint and there are some beautiful boats. Even triple moored, it's just like being in London. This boat has to win a prize for the best name ever. And old Judith here showing support for her national football team. Oh, ducks. I'm not sure if you can see, but there are lots of motorhomes and caravans behind the boats. This blue one on the hard standing is for sale. It really does look like a lovely marina. Of course, no canal visit would be complete without the obligatory shopping trolley. I'd call that a successful trip. I'm crossing that bridge there and making my way through the park on the other side of the water. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And keep your fingers and toes crossed that the weather will stay good enough for me to get the boat out over Easter. See you all soon. Bye.